Hello guys, you're welcome to eComputing's YouTube channel. My name is Eugene and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create a virtual machine and deploy Windows 11 operating system to it on Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure, as we all know, is a cloud computing platform that is managed by Microsoft. Okay, so today I'm going to take you through how you can create a VM on Microsoft Azure. Okay, before you create any resource on Microsoft Azure, the first thing that you need to understand is that we have something that we call resource groups. Okay, so basically a resource group is just a logical container that is used to organize resources on Microsoft Azure. Okay, you can also use it to assign policies. The reason why I'm talking about resource groups is that before you create any resource on Microsoft Azure, being it a virtual machine, a storage account, or something else, like network adapters, and so on and so forth, you need to place them inside a resource group. So that is the first thing that anybody is going to create when he thinks about creating any resource, such as what we're going to do today, the VM in Microsoft Azure. You can create your resource group alongside your virtual machine when you are creating it, or you can create your resource group, then afterwards, you come and create your virtual machine. Okay, so to create a resource group, you can find the resource group blade in the portal menu over here. Okay, so you can use this option over here. You can also use options that have been pinned to the recently used um, features that we have in Azure. Okay, so I'm going to click on this resource group here. And as you can see, I already have resource groups in my Microsoft Azure subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new resource group by clicking on this option here. And then before you create a resource group, it will give you the option to specify the subscription that you want to place your resource group in. As you can see, I have two subscriptions, an Azure Pass subscription and an MSDN platform subscription. But the Azure Pass has been deactivated, okay, because it has expired. All right, so we're going to go for the MSDN option, which is the default, and I'm going to give it a name. Now, when you're giving a resource group a name, you don't have to leave spaces, no spaces. Okay, so you can either use maybe hyphen to separate the various words that you want to use to label the resource group. So I'm going to call this one test RG. Okay, and then it also gives you the chance to specify the region that you want to place this your resource group. There are so many regions that Microsoft is using for their cloud computing platform. But we're going to stick with the East US and I'm going to click on create here to create my resource group. Okay. It validates the various inputs options that I've given over here. It says everything is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create here to create my resource group. We're going to use this resource group to house or host the virtual machine we are about to create. We have our resource group created. We can go ahead and switch to the virtual machines blade over here. If you're looking for any service in Microsoft Azure and you don't find it in the portal menu here, you can go ahead and use the search over here to look for it. Okay, so aside using this uh, virtual machines blade here to create my VM, I can also actually search for it here like virtual machines, right? Then it gives me the option to select the virtual machine and then go ahead and create it. Okay, so I'm going to create my virtual machine. I'm going to click on this option over here to create a new virtual machine. Now, once the create a virtual machine options is open for us, we're going to make sure we select the right resource group. We created a resource group called test RG for this demo. So I'm going to select it and then give my VM a name. The rules governing how you label stuff in Microsoft Azure still applies here. So we're going to make sure we don't leave any space because for instance if i go like let's say win 11 right it tells me you cannot have special characters or spacing and stuff right so that is the reason why when earlier on i was creating my resource group here i did not leave any space so you need to make sure you avoid the spaces you can use a dash that one works fine okay then it also gives us another option over here to specify the region that we want to place our resource or our virtual machine. The region is just a location on planet Earth that has Microsoft data centers uh, that are serving their cloud computing uh, client. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the East US and then it gives me an option to specify availability options. This is just for redundancy. So if, for instance, you want to make sure that Microsoft provides more redundancy for your virtual machine uh, we have on Azure by just switching in between these options over here is going to increase the redundancy that you have uh, on your resource that you're creating on this platform, right? But as you can see, the default says no infrastructure redundancy required. 
removed. So we just go and leave it at the default because we are just testing. We don't want to put any extra load on Microsoft Azure just for testing. So I'm going to leave it at no infrastructure redundancy required. You can increase the security type to a higher one if you think you are going to store sensitive information on your VM. Okay, uh, just to make sure that in case there is an attack, the hackers are going to have a tough time getting into your resource or your VM. Okay, now we have an option here too for images. This is where you're going to select the operating system that you want for your virtual machine. As you can see, I have Windows 11 Pro over here by default. But normally, if you have not created a VM on Azure before, when you come here, the lists or the options that you're going to see over here doesn't normally include Windows 11, right? You're going to see Windows 10, Windows Server 2019, and a couple of Linux operating systems over here. So if you're looking for a specific operating system and it's not on this default list over here, what you need to do is that you can click on this see all images over here. Let's say I want to deploy a Windows 7 operating system. Windows 7 is not on this list, right? So how do I get it? By default, this was not here. The Windows 11 option was not here. Okay, so if you want to get it and it's not on your list over here, you can click on see all images here and then it will take you to a location that you can select any image that you want. Okay, so you can go to the Azure Marketplace here and you search. Okay, so if let's say I want Windows 7, I can just type Windows 7 like this. Press enter here. And it's going to search for a Windows 7 image here for me. As you can see, there's a Windows 7 image over here, right? The same applies to Windows 11 that we are deploying. If you check the list and it's not there, you can just come here and search for Windows 11. When you press enter here to search for Windows 11 images, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of them right here if you want enterprise edition or pro edition you can get it from there right so i want to just select the windows 11 pro gen 2 right and then move on with um, the other options okay i just post instance is optional so i'm not going to go for it and then the next thing i want to talk about here has to do with the the size of the vm right Okay, you can select the VM depending on how much you want to pay. Okay, so the default option here says you're going to give us two CPUs and then an AGB RAM for $70.08 a month. So I'm going to go for this option here, see all sizes to see the other options that I have. So you can see we have an option here for general purpose one. This is going to give us 3.5 gigabytes of RAM with four disks and then a temporal storage of seven gigabyte. Okay. And the thing is that the higher you go with your VM size, the more money you're gonna pay. All right. So if for instance I select this option over here and I go select over here, you will see that the pricing is going to change, right? Because I'm using less resources. Like for instance, that 3.5 GB memory VM size comes with one CPU. Definitely, the pricing is not going to be the same. As you can see, it's going to give us this size of a VM for $53.29 a month. It's cool. Let's just move on. I think we need more RAM for a Windows 11 machine. So I'm going to click select all sizes here again and then go for the AGB one. I'm going to stick with my $70. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is the administrator account options here you need to create an admin account for your vm okay so let's create it i'm going to call this admin you admin and it tells me everything is fine and of course there's not every name that you can use over here some of the names have been reserved like user as you can see when i do this see it tells me we have an issue over here right when i go this way it tells me usernames must not include reserved words okay so these words have been reserved so i'm going to call mine you admin here and then set a password for it. And for security reasons, Microsoft Azure VMs does not accept simple passwords or dictionary-based passwords. So see, when I set a simple password like this, dance, it's not picking it, okay? So it has to be a complex password. A password that contains alphabets, numbers, uppercases, and lowercases, and probably symbols. So I'm gonna set my password here. Okay, then the next thing is the firewall rules, okay? You need to create a rule that will allow your client to connect 
to this VM. If you have the intention of using SSH to connect to this virtual machine, you need to make sure you check this option over here to open the SSH port on this VM's file so that SSH traffic can come in and out of the VM. Okay, but we're going to use RDP to connect to our VM. So I'm going to leave the RDP uh, TCP port 3389 open and then select this option over here to confirm and then go next over here. Now, the next option here has to do with storage options. If you want Microsoft to give you solid state drive for your VM, you can use this. We have standard ones and then we have HDD, good old HDD. Okay, but this HDDs, we all know that SSDs are more faster and redundant than hard disk drives. So if let's say you're going to frequently access this virtual machine and you want high input output performance, then you have to go for an SSD drive. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at the premium local redundant storage and then leave the encryption type at the default. Okay, you have an additional virtual hard disk you want to attach to this VM. There's an option here for you to do it, but we do not have. So I'm going to go next here to the networking options. And as you can see, it is creating a virtual network for us. Okay. And then a subnet together with the public IP address that we're going to use to connect to this virtual machine. So everything seems to be okay here. I'm going to go next here to management. And then I'm going to leave everything at the default here. Okay and go next here go next and i'm not going to specify any tags i'm going to leave it at the default and go next here everything is set with just this basic information you can create a vm on microsoft azure it's going to check the validity of the information that i've passed on this particular deployment and it says everything is fine and it's going to charge me 0 0.0960 dollars per hour which is reasonable okay everything seems to be okay here i'm gonna go ahead and create according to microsoft if you start provisioning a virtual machine it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds for you to finish after 30 seconds you should have a windows 11 vm ready for use right which is way faster than doing it on premises all right so the deployment is complete so it's giving us an option here to go to the resource so you can click here to go to the VM that we just created. Okay, so everything is looking good here. It shows that the VM is up and running. It's a public IP address of the VM is ready. And it's going to take a while, just about a minute or two for it to be fully ready. So I'm going to refresh my screen here. So everything is ready. So you can use this public IP address over here to connect to it through remote desktop. But Microsoft has made it very, very easy for us to connect to VMs in the cloud by giving us this option over here. So I can actually download an RDP file by using this option here and then click on RDP here. It will take me to a location that I can download an RDP file for my VM. Okay, and with this RDP file, the only thing that I will need is my username and password to connect to my VM. So I'm gonna show you how you can use this RDP file to connect to your virtual machine. The virtual machine that we just created okay so i'm going to download this rdp file this rdp file contains the public ip and all the information we need to connect to our vm so it's done downloading let me just check it real quick in the downloads folder as you can see we have our rdp file here for the new vm we just created and when we check the status of the vm over here it shows that the vm is running everything looks good so i can begin the connection process I'm going to connect on my Windows 11 RDP file here to connect to my VM. Okay, it's going to give me an information over here that this is coming from an unknown publisher. I'm going to just click, don't ask me again, and go connect here. And then it gives me a credential prompt, right? So I'm going to click on more options here because I know that is not my username. And I'll click on use a different account. And then I'm going to use the username we specified earlier on, which is you admin and then I'll specify my password here and go okay see what happens okay my password is wrong I'm gonna try it again and go okay here yes everything is successful it tells me we need to just install the certificate I'm gonna go yes here 
to proceed. Yes. A Windows 11 virtual machine in the cloud is up and running. So from anywhere around the world, if you create a virtual machine like this in the cloud, you can use it to do all your activities and then connect to it anytime that you want. So this is how simple it is to create a virtual machine in the cloud. You're going to wait for the operating system to finish loading and then we're going to explore the user interface of this new Windows 11 operating system we have deployed in the cloud. Okay, it's giving us an OOB experience here. So I'm going to click next, next, next here just to get past these options. All right, our OS is up and running. A full-blown Windows 11 operating system in the cloud. Okay, it has 8 GB RAM and as you can see, it also has 126 gigabyte SSD drive and everything looks perfect over here. You can install your applications here. And one cool thing is that you can even do a direct copy and paste from your physical machine into this VM that you've created. So for instance, let's say I have a picture over here, I have a file over here. I want to transfer to my VM. It's as easy as copy and paste. And then I can work simultaneously between my physical machine and then my virtual machine. Okay, in the cloud. I can share my music when I'm playing the music in the VM. It comes out of my speaker right here. I can just use it to do my regular work. Okay, I, it has Microsoft Office Suite in here that you can use to do almost all your office documentation. Okay, so we're going to end this video over here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Support what we are doing. We're going to make more videos for you. Thank you.